So we've gotten to a point inside our lesson today where we need to start talking about something called date time. And date time is a built-in struct that we have inside the .NET framework that allow for us to work with dates and times. So we're just gonna sort of go over what exactly it is and how we can use it inside our applications. So as you can see here starting out, I created a variable, I just call it date one, and then I set it equal to a new date time. So because we have this build instruct inside the .NET framework, we can just simply create a new date time object by referring to the date time uh, struct we have inside uh, C sharp. So what I can do is because this is a constructor is I can actually pass in a couple of different parameters to sort of define what sort of date time I'm trying to create here. So the basic idea here is that when we create this new date time object, we create a new date and time that we define ourselves. So as you can see, I filled in a couple of different parameters. I filled in a year, you know, a date, a time, and so on. If I were to actually run this inside my application, do note there will be a couple of different things inside the, uh, inside the console here. You just need to know that the top one up here has a specific date that I set inside the parentheses or inside the parameters. It is right now, according to this one, I said the 1st of May, 2008, uh, 8.30, and 52 seconds <laughs> inside this thing here. So knowing this, you can see that we can actually go ahead and set our own time and our own date inside this date time object. Now, what if we want to not set a date? What if we want to go in and actually grab either the current time or tomorrow's time or something else, you know, inside this specific date time object, we can do that as well. So what I went ahead and did here is I created three more variables called date two, date three, date four, you know, just to sort of have something. And I went ahead and said equal to our date time and then a property inside the date time that we have inside the .NET framework. So what I can do is I can go ahead and say, well, we have a keyword called dot now in order to get the current time and date. We can also get the UTC format of the current time. We can also get uh, something called today. And if we just go ahead and run them, you can see what they do. I kind of have to drag it over every single time. Uh, you can see that we get the current date and time. We get the current date and time in the UTC format. And then we just get today's date without the time included. So just a zero, 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 and so on. Um, now, something to note here is that we have many different types of properties. And I do have, if you go to the website that I used to set up this lesson here, which of course is the official website you wanna to go to if you want to get any sort of information regarding .NET, uh, which is inside Microsoft website. So if you go in here, you can actually see we have many different types of properties. Uh, let me just scroll down and find them here. Or we could just use the shortcut on the side here. That might be easier to do. But as you can see, we have many different types of properties we can use. I'm not gonna show all of them. I'm just gonna tell you that this link here, which I'm gonna leave in the description of the video, does actually have all the different properties and methods and so on, if you want to just sort of play around with this a little bit more. So going back inside our application, uh, you can actually, we did actually check out what they actually did inside the console. So let's go ahead and talk about a few of the different methods that we have inside the date time that we can use inside C Sharp. So when it comes to, let's say I want to add or subtract a day or something, maybe an hour to the format that I, I have in here, what I can do is I went ahead and grabbed the current, um, the current date time, you know, date and time right now. And I just went ahead and took that one and I said I wanted to add a certain number of days and it just included a one in here to say I want to add one day. Um, I should also point out here that we can also subtract the day if you want to. And just as a bonus here, if you don't know exactly what you can add in here and you don't want to check out the website I linked there, what you can do is you can also just go ahead and start writing add and then it comes up with all these different options here where you can choose something you want to do. So you can add minutes, you can add months, so on. It's all built into it here. So if we were to go ahead and say we want to add, let's say one day to this and actually run it, you can now see that if I just highlight the proper one, that right down here, it now says it is the 25th not the 24th, which is the current day. You can actually see that because all the, the three ones above it is actually set to the 24th. So I'm just adding a day doing this. Now what we can also do using other different types of methods is we can also go ahead and uh, just get certain uh, formats with the date time. So we have something called too long date string. We have something called too short date string, 
to long time string and to short time string. So if we were to run these, you can also see that if we were to go in here, you can see that we get different formats. So the first one, which is the one called too long date string, is actually gonna give us an actual day, so Tuesday, the 24th of September, 2019. And then you can see we sort of change the formats here underneath. So it just sort of like if you want to get certain days or if you want to get certain times, you can do that using this in here. So having talked about the different formats, there's one more thing I want to talk about, which is the fact that we can also set a custom uh, date format inside when we want to do something with dates. So if I want to get the current date, and current time, because we also work with time, I can actually go ahead, if I want to, go inside and use the toString method, and inside the parentheses define a certain format that I want to print out using the toString format. And I do have another link here that I will also link in the description, so if I were to go in here, you can actually see that I have another link that actually spells out what the format is, so in this case it would be a non-capitalized D, that would then give us this date here. So having used some of these letters, I actually went ahead and created the year, the month, and the day. And if we were to run this, you can see we now get, if we were to put it over, we get the 1909-24. So it's 2019, it's September, and it's the 24th. That's basically what we're getting here. So there's quite a bit here you can play around with. And again, I do really recommend that you go inside and check out the links that I leave in the description so you can see more properties, more formats, uh, or more methods if you want to work more with this date time here. And I think this is pretty much what we're gonna talk about when it comes to dates. Uh, we're probably gonna do some kind of project using the date time uh, struct that we have inside the .NET framework at some point in the future. So I think this is something that is worth remembering also because we use dates and times and stuff inside applications quite often actually when we build different things. So I think this is something that's worth remembering. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.